reading a short story at a public venue. Yeah. This one is called Trust and Obey. <clears throat> it was Easter Sunday and the ever golden sun was shining. A few stirring birds could be heard chirping sonatas of mating calls, nature's pickup lines. Some flowers started blooming and absorbing rainbows of ultraviolet rays and reflecting light it doesn't absorb to give the world a variety of color and affinity. All in all, despite apparent beauty, it was a dreadful morning to wake up to. It pained Kenneth to wake up from a deep sleep in midstream of an REM phase dream state, awakened by an insistent mother thrusting fisted knuckles on a door to his only form of structured privacy negated any idyllic wonders nature provided. Kenneth Wilfred Kane imposed his mother, we will not be late for church and there are important things to be dealt with. Mom, argued Kenneth in a reluctant, groggy, 14 and a half year old voice, we're never late for church. In fact, we're normally 10 minutes early. Why? Because church is important to me as well as it should be you, she interrupted on schedule. Bravo, well rehearsed, he mumbled frustratingly to himself. What? She cohesively retaliates. Nothing, I'm moving. Forty minutes later, the car ride to Brethren Baptist Church in modernized rural Milton, Delaware, was less enthusiastic. The guilt-ridden Christian wanted to be a good person, but found the scriptures and the church that adhered to them to be merely semi-inspiring, morally and ethically confusing. How's Jesus with you today? Mom cheerfully inquires. Fine, he robotically states. Just fine, that's all. Kenneth drifted, drifted off, hoping the subject would be finished. Images recalled in his mind gave brief salvation. Crushes in school and pictures from the Sears women's undergarment sale flyer. Within milliseconds, other associations evolved as well. Reminiscence of his father bouncing him on his lap and spinning him around in the backyard playing airplane, wishing, wishing he could go back in time. The same moods reoccurred within the same psychophysical shell as he thought of why he somehow deserves this low of fate, reduced only to fawning after sophomores in cheerleader outfits, but whose boyfriends have brand new Camaros, and the rumors of how the sweetest and nicest ones already lost their virginity to a cocky, arrogant jock on the football team. I've arranged an appointment with you to talk with Reverend Jameson. Graham Jameson? Now, before you cower from the idea, give it a chance. Many people love the Reverend Jameson, and he's helped many a person in the congregation by providing scriptures to help them understand and get them through an ordeal. He realized she sprung this on him abruptly so he wouldn't have time to conjure and prepare adequate plays to avoid the arrangement. All he understood clearly was he neither knew himself nor could summon to the service if he did. Kenny, his mother, elongated to organize another argument and change of subject. I'd give you a raise and allowance, one, if I could afford, afford it, and two, if you were disciplined as to what you would spend it on. I hate to see you waste it on music that doesn't cultivate anything decent. Well, country music doesn't always project any sense of morals either, Mom, but you mm -hmm. listen to that, uh -huh. he rebutted. That may be true, but you don't hear much about country stars doing drugs or blowing their brains out like that Cobain guy. Kenneth again retreated, retreated to silence, realizing that any ammunition he attempts to use normally gets returned twofold. Mom, I think I just need some time to figure things out for myself. Hon, you've been acting too lonely for too long. Now, I think it has something to do with your father or maybe the lack of one. Now, the Lord took him away for a reason, but it wasn't to punish us or hurt us. He had a reason, but it's beyond our understanding. I mean, we're only human. Here we go again, Kenneth thought as he tried to keep to himself. God is with you, son. All you have to do is have a little more faith in him. <clears throat> as they pulled into the church parking lot, Kenneth remembered that hallowing sensation he had when they first pulled in, months after his father was killed and when they first got saved. He remembered how his mother held his hand tight and when they were called to the front to profess their public loyalty to the Lord. He also re re recollected the sweet old Sunday school teacher that told him what to pray and to ask God to say hello to his daddy in heaven. 
for him and how he was in a better place. She seemed to epitomize everything that was generally caring about God, juxtaposing their general spiritual attitude. Now I know his reputation as a fire and brimstone teacher can be intimidating, but that's just a style he portrays through the pulpit. He's really a nice person and well-versed in the Bible. He straightened up a little as they got out of the car, just as Dr. Parker, his wife, and two daughters headed up the sidewalk to the same Brethren Baptist Church. He noticed how the modest skirts of their two pubescent girls couldn't completely conceal the shape of their silhouettes and how toned they were compared to their mother's childbearing hips. Doc and Mrs. Parker escorted their girls through the entrance with the same subtle vigilance they used to screen other public appearances. Kenneth always glanced aside them in guilt and despondency whenever boys hovered near them while they were out of parental radar. I have a special solo in the choir today just for you, Kenny. I hope it'll give you some comfort it has given me. Lovely. <clears throat> he noticed most of the congregation as they neared the front, only three to four pews back from where they normally sat. He noticed the very old, intense-worn faces of struggling nuclear families, how the younger than middle-aged women loved chatting with each other and <laughs> took turns holding babies. He particularly noticed the quality of clothing amongst the churchgoers revealed the various cliques within the society of worshipers. He noticed how certain women had arduous bus lines that subliminally lured unrestrained minds and eyes to inconspicuous glances. He compared the youthful curves and shapes of beauty to the old, the overweight, the greasy faces with tobacco-stained smiles and the dorky pimple skin. If appearance are insignificant, then why am I made to notice them, he solemnly observed. They sat down next to the Joneses and exchanged polite, well-rehearsed greetings and simple, gratuitous compliments, particularly with a matrimonious Penny Jones, who first encouraged their attendance after his fa father's funeral five years ago. Her strong will prodded his vulnerable mother to this path of cultish seduction, with as much determination as the door-to-door -door salesman who once sold her a vacuum cleaner she couldn't afford but was convinced she couldn't live without. He came to realize how Penny enjoyed being right about many things while Mom was a humble believer who found it easier to live with the certain weaknesses rather than to harden herself. After opening remarks from a leading elder, his mother took her place with the choir. The lyrics of Great is Thy Faithfulness spilling from the half, half a dozen chorus ladies only discouraged Kenneth and allowed his consciousness to travel shamefully, shamefully, <clears throat> hold on, uh, lost my spot, shamefully toward the beautiful bodices he could never have and wouldn't know how to woo if he had the societal status to approach. His thoughts returned to his condemned shell as mo mother took her place front and center of the congregation. He forced his disdainful head up in her direction, knowing there'd be consequences if he displayed indications of deliberately ignoring. She proceeded to energetically vocalize her strategically, cho so strategically chosen solo selection. Trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Yeah. Mom's special message, his mind gathered, as if the mere thought of a discussion with Reverend Jameson wasn't worse enough but to trust and obey. Conclude the strong motherly alto in near perfect octave. The choir took their seats as did his mother who then tried to put his ar her arm around him attempting to bond in some way. All he could feel was the eyes of his adolescent peers. The entire Milton Middle School could be here, he exclaimed in his solitary mind. Now it was the fervorous hour for the Reverend Jameson's Easter Sunday sermon. Ironically, he never pounded his fist like the prime time stereotypes, as his scorching speech might as well be a sledgehammer. Matthew 5, 27, chapter 5, 20, verses 27 through 30 was the iron on which he molded the day's preaching. If an eye offend me, pluck it out, rather than the whole body be condemned. This concluded damning references to Victoria's Secret catalogs, the attire in public schools, and the beaches during the summer. Uh -huh. The big hand on the clock took 10 hours to hit 12. 
As Reverend Graham Jamison concluded, Kenneth realized the sweat from his body surrendered forgave any need to leave in the middle of the grilling for a bathroom break. As the servile flock filed out in showy cheerfulness, Kenneth carefully leaned away from Mother as the inevitable approached. They strolled lightly toward the large double doors where Reverend Jameson proudly exchanged goodbyes with the wishy-washy and the pseudo-devout. Wonderful sermon, Reverend. I feel it was good and what, good what you said and it needed to be said, his mother pontificated. Well, thank you, Mindy, he returned. And how are you, son? I'm okay, covered Kenneth. Just okay. He replied with a soft stare alternate from his galactic speeches. Why don't you have a seat in my office, young man? Make yourself comfortable. I'll be up in a few. I need to finish my goodbyes and happy Easters. <clears throat> Kenneth was at least glad to get away from the human traffic jam of the front doors. He paced up the stairs with low blood sugar lightheadedness that did little to help him brace for what was apparently coming. As he stepped into his office, the temperature seemed ironically warmer compared to the rest of the church. He sat in one of the two deep red chairs facing each other in front of his desk for the sole purpose of intimate, one-on-one -on -one spiritual talk. He could already sense the Reverend's strong, determined, judgmental psych in the other red chair. Every detail about the setting felt geared to putting him on the spot and scaring, scaring him with eternal damnation. The six-minute wait felt as long as the preacher's sermon. The door softly opened with a slow, haunting swing as the Reverend James, Graham Jamison took his seat in front of the one timid, backsliding soul. He projected a somber glance as he reached into his suit breast pocket. You've been masturbating, Kenneth, he said almost joyfully as he pulled a flask from that same breast pocket. It's okay, I do it sometimes too. Uh -huh. And I'm aware you notice those young women who wear those skirts a little on the tight side. Yeah, they do look sweet. Kenneth, Kenneth, Kenneth's jaw could nest a bald eagle with 13 eggs as the reverend gracefully unscrewed the lid from the flask. Sometimes I put on quite a show for those straight-laced ladies and self-pious people. Every syllable of his speech lifted 40 pounds off Ken Kenneth's shoulder as that burdensome shell cracked like boiling water shattering ice. Don't I? Yeah, um, I, you don't have to explain anything to me, son. Think of, me, think of it as me giving each person what they want to hear. Some need to be scared, and I scare them. Serves them right, I guess. Wow, uh, the Rev took a hearty swirl from his concealed worldliness and handed it to Kenneth. Sometimes I don't know what I believe in anymore. I kept in line so much that I forgot who I really was. Kenneth took the flask with restrained enthusiasm and took a grand gulp that nearly surrendered his mother's French toast. <laughs> he coughed with excitement as the reverend chuckled. Atta boy! <sighs> Kenneth wasn't educated by enough movies to know what would be in the flask, but knew well, well enough that it had to be interesting. Probably won't be your last time, Rev continued. You know, someday... I hope to get busted. I believe that's probably what happened to Mr. Sam Kennison. We see the world as it is, son. No more good guys. I was once in your position with a fear of God put in me. But now I just can't do it anymore. And your fear reminded me. Oh, just one swig, son. He stopped Kenneth from trying a second and retrieved his tightly guarded secret. Don't want to send you back to your mom all tipsy, you know, he continued. We'll keep this chat between you and me. If your mother or anyone prized, tell them we both made a covenant to keep this talk between us. He paused for a moment. I don't have many years left, and, well, no matter. The important thing is, you're okay, regardless. The Reverend showed him the door with a hearty double pat on his back. Kenneth could have danced down the stairs with the grace and joy of Fred Astaire.